Hi, if you're wondering why the weather is so variable at the moment, here's how to make a simple spreadsheet that shows some of what's going on. It's not complicated, it doesn't use any program, it just uses the graphing function of the spreadsheet, which means we need an x-axis and a y-axis. And our y-axis equals a constant k times x times 1 minus x. X can be any number between 0 and 1, and our constant k can be between 0 and 4. I'll select 2.5 to start with, as it's in the middle, and x, a nice random number, 0 0.247. Y equals plus k times x times, open brackets, 1 minus x. I had to move it away so it's positively selected it and then put it back. OK, we're nearly done, but we have to edit this to lock it on the constant. So I'll lock it on the A column and the row 11. And that means it will, for all our data points, it will use that constant. The next value of x is the old value of y. There we go. And the next value of y is the same as x. The reason is this will be a cobweb diagram and by doing this it shows how the data is connected. And that is our first data point. And I find it really helpful to label the data points number one and now we're ready for our next one plus one plus plus that plus one okay our next value of x is again the old value of y and now we can calculate our new value of y so I'll just go there and copy that formula into there I can copy these two there and that means we're ready with our next data point. And I can copy this section down there, and there we have our third data point. I want about 100 of these data points, so uh, one thing to notice is don't copy the first data point again because it's got that constant in there, and you want to use the ones with the formulas. So I need 100, so I'm going to pause the video because there's lots of ways to do that, do that and uh, I'll be back in a minute. and paste. And there's my last 10 data points and I've got 100 data points. Let's go back up to the top and start uh, doing some graphing. So I find it helpful when I'm graphing to zoom out uh, on these spreadsheets. So let's, uh, let's go 50% and now hopefully we can put the, the graph here. So I select the data, and there we go. And now, insert, object, chart. And these cobweb diagrams work with an XY scatter chart. So lines only, I find that clearer. And everything should be fine, so it's just next 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 or just finish. I'll just show you what's there. Our data ranges, data series in columns, first row is a label, that's fine. There's our data, looks a bit complicated, I'll go through it uh, in a minute. And we've got some titles if you want, they're optional extras. Finish. Okay, now there's our chart. Unfortunately it's at the bottom of the spreadsheet, I'd like it at the top. So I'm going to select it and cut it, go to the top of the chart and put it here. OK. So here's our start and here's our stop. You can see there's not a hundred data points there. Well actually there are, but this data settles down to a constant value after a point twenty-eight. So that looks is why it looks like there's so few data points. 
When it gets a bit more complicated, it's helpful to know where your start and stop points are. So let's put those in. Start is on point one, and down the bottom, stop. I'll put it on the calculated value of y. And now we have to tell it that we want to use those data labels, they're called. Label. E L. So select our chart, edit, data ranges, and here's our y value, but that's not quite what we want for the data labels, but I'll use it. Copy it, put the data labels in here, and change that E from column E to F. OK. Now it's not showing it yet, because again, we have to select um, or tell it to turn on data labels. So I think I can insert data labels. And there, if I show category, because it's not a number, I think it should work. And there it's put our start let data label. It's not showing the stop because it doesn't like it when there are repeated values. It only shows the stop if there were different numbers all the way down. So, but it's good to know where the beginning is. And let's put a something, let's change our data a little bit. Let's make k, for example, um, 2.9. Do we get the same shape? Ooh, it, the data circles in, or squares in, down to a point that we can't really see very clearly, but it circles down to one point. What there is actually is a curve that all the points are following. But we can't do that unless we see more points. Let's put in a bigger number of k. k is a bit like the energy in the system or the amount of food available if, uh, if it's for animals. So let's put 3.9 in as k. Whoa! There we go. There we can see our curve which the data is following. Let's make the graph a bit bigger and try to make the lines a bit smaller. Edit. And stretch that. Yep. Oh, no. Missed it. There we go. OK. Change the width down to zero. That should make it a bit clearer. There we go. So we can see where we started, and the data goes all over the place and stops over here. But it does all lie on a curve, and it's called a parabola. That's basically it. I'm going to tidy this up in the next video, but you can see what's going on with the weather. Basically, it's jumping all over the place because there's so much energy in the system. If there was less energy in the system from global warming, or not so much global warming, like if K was about 1.6, we would have much steadier weather. It settles down at a certain point. If you don't have enough energy in the in the system, it goes down to zero. I think if you put it down this k below one, it should go down to zero. There's our start, and it goes down. So what we've got is a decay, and then we've got above one, we've got growth to a steady point, 
2.6 we've got the date <coughs> the weather settling down after being a bit variable and when you put more energy in the system it jumps all over the place that's a cobweb diagram and it gives an idea of what's happening to the weather